Oh, hello everyone. Uh, this is again just to go over the problem that you did in class. Uh, I thought maybe I'll create a video and then post it also online. Uh, just outlining some of the important steps. Uh, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email. And problem here was uh, uh, you assume a linear profile for the velocity and the temperature inside the velocity boundary layer and the thermal boundary layer. And the goal is to calculate how the Nusselt number varies with the Reynolds and Prandtl, right? So that's the that's the aim. I mean, the bottom line is to calculate the heat transfer coefficient for flow over a flat plane. So now, uh, how are we going to do this? Again, we got to use the, uh, the von Karman relationship and a similar, similar relationship derived for the thermal boundary layer. The idea is to use these two relationships to calculate how the Nusselt number varies with the Reynolds and Prandtl which again is our final goal and uh, the advantage again with using assuming a profile for the velocity and temperature is that you know many times you can experimentally measure what the velocity and the temperature is that in the different regions in a pipe or, or a flat plate and so on and hence once you know this relationship you can calculate useful quantities such as your heat transfer coefficient h so uh, again you assume the linear profile for velocity so uh, Again, now, uh, as you can see, there are two constants, A and B. You need two boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are V equal to 0 at Y equal to 0. And the velocity reaches the free stream velocity at Y equal to delta. So uh, use these two boundary conditions, evaluate the constants A and B. And this is the expression that you get for the velocity V over V infinity is Y over delta, where delta is your boundary layer thickness. Similarly, uh, you can uh, see a linear relationship for uh, temperature. And again, this is temperature, so the constants are not going to be the same. You've got to choose different constants. And the two boundary conditions here are at the surface, the temperature is the same as the surface temperature. And at the edge of the thermal boundary layer, the temperature is your free stream temperature T infinity. Uh, important, keep in mind, your thermal boundary layer thickness is delta T is different than your velocity boundary layer thickness delta. So please keep that in mind. This is very important. These are two different quantities, right? Uh, so again, but uh, using these two boundary conditions, you can solve for the temperature profile. And as you can see, you know, the relationships are very similar, where the reduced temperature is y over delta t, the reduced velocity is y over delta, right? Uh, so now you have a profile for both velocity and temperature. Now let's go on and calculate what the heat transfer coefficient h is going to be. And for that, uh, uh, you you have to use the the one common, uh, similar to the one common relationship. I mean, this is what you, you take a shell, you do an energy balance, uh, and then this is a relationship that you come up with. And as you can see, if you want to evaluate uh, this relationship, you need to know what the velocity profile and the temperature profiles are. And then, and the more importantly, you integrate from zero to delta t, where delta t is the thermal boundary layer thickness. And uh, using this relationship, if one is to calculate what the heat transfer coefficient h is, uh, then you got to use the basic definition for h, uh, and uh, again, which I've emphasized in a previous video. So, uh, so please memorize this, keep this in mind. This is an important relationship where you just say. Know, heat transferred, which is H times delta T, and very near the wall, heat is transferred by conduction, and this is nothing but your Fourier's law. So, uh, using these two relationships, you can uh, get an expression for your local heat transfer coefficient HX, uh, and, uh, and and using HX, then you know what the definition of your Nusselt number is, right? You can then uh, figure out how your Nusselt number varies with an Reynolds and Prandtl. So that is it. Uh, so after this point, it's a bunch of math. Uh, as you can see, you have to plug in the profiles for velocity and temperature. You're going to come up with a differential equation, which you got to solve uh, to calculate what your Nusselt number is going to be. And uh, this PDF walks you uh, through the math. Uh, and uh, OK, but before I go on, I think uh, we can just pause. And uh, there is one simplifying assumption and I'm trying to get to that. So the case one, uh, the life is a little bit simplified when Prandtl number is equal to 1. And why is that? When Prandtl number is equal to 1, uh, my delta T with thermal boundary layer becomes the same thickness as delta. 
and hence life is simplified and then uh, it's easier to solve the differential equation let's put it that way so uh, but in uh, but you know but i know you guys are good with math you have dealt with differential equations before so let's go on and solve the more complicated uh, uh, version which is when uh, which is, uh, oh, I think it's a matter, so which is when the Prandtl number is not equal to 1. So when the Prandtl number is not equal to 1, go through the math, I mean, go through this, uh, I mean, uh, definitions in the, uh, or derivations in this PDF, you're going to, and obviously this relationship holds good. Now when uh, delta t is not equal to delta, right, uh, obviously you got to, this is a little bit more complicated, but it still can be solved. And uh, by using a change of variables, and I've done it in the following pages, so please go through that, and we did this in class as well. Uh, but the most important thing here is, if you want to solve this differential equation, you need to know first how delta changes with x. So, of course, you should be able to do that, because, again, the one common relationship helps you do that. I mean, even on exam one, uh, the question was asked for a linear profile and velocity, calculate how delta changes with x and also how the total drag force changes with x. That was exam 1 problem and many of you did that as well. So first for linear variations in velocity with distance, solve first how delta varies with x using the one common relationship. Hence uh, using utilizing how delta varies with x you can solve this particular uh, differential equation. Uh, this is very important. Uh, so, for such problems in thermal boundary layers, the first step is usually, you know, solving the one common to see how the velocity boundary layer changes. Uh, using, utilizing that, you can uh, easily solve this uh, differential equation, which is what I have done in the following pages. Another important point I would, uh, I would, I would like to make here is, uh, is again, uh, the final step, right? Uh, so you can calculate now utilizing this integral relation and how the definition for your heat transfer coefficient, how your Nusselt number changes with Reynolds and Prandtl, and that is what is given here. Uh, but again, keep in mind this is a local Nusselt number or the local heat transfer coefficient. If you want to determine the total heat transfer or an average heat transfer coefficient over the plate, then you need to integrate, right, uh, which is what is shown here. Again, this is very similar to the problem asked in exam 1 where you calculated your uh, local drag coefficient and from the local drag coefficient you can, or the local shear stress, and using that you integrated over the whole plate to get the total drag force, right. So very similarly, you calculate your local or uh, heat transfer coefficient h and you integrate over the full plate to get your total heat transfer. So keep that in mind. Uh, 